Hi, it's Imogen Lamport from Inside Out Style coming to answer your colour and style questions first. And the lucky dip today comes from Jennifer who says, I have too many things. I don't really wear but feel too bad to chuck them out. I know they say we only wear 20% of what's in our wardrobe. Probably true for me. I can't seem to let go of stuff and live my dream of having a capsule wardrobe. So there's two little things to think about here. Um, first is, why are you holding on to it? Now, there is you know, sunk costs. There's lots of psychological reasons we hold on to clothes and anything for too long. There's the sunk cost of it. We've spent time, energy and money buying the thing, so we don't want to get rid of it. So we often think that maybe one day we'll wear it if we just have the right thing to go with it. Um, so it becomes very hard to let go. And also we place higher value on something that we own than something that we don't own. And I've talked about this before, about how it's really important to become a more conscious shopper, to make sure that what you bring in is great, which is why I say rated an eight, nine or 10 out of 10 um, before you buy it. Uh, if you are rating it out of 10 and it's only a seven, don't buy it. If it's a six, definitely don't buy it. So really it's gotta be, you know, almost, you know, like going, this is an amazing piece. I can't wait to wear it. One of those things I always think about when I'm buying clothes is, do I want to just like wear it right now? Do I want to wear it home? Um, do I want to wear it straight away? If you're not that excited about it, don't buy it. It's probably going to be a mistake. It's going to be one of those things. And then of course, once we've got it home, it's hard to let go of because we attach ourselves, we attach value and a higher value to something. I mean, if you've ever had that experience where, you know, it could be something like someone selling a house or a car and you think they're asking way too much money for that. They're kidding themselves. It's because they place a higher value on it than the market does. And it's the same thing with our clothes. You place a higher value on it um, than it actually may have. So particularly when it's not working in your wardrobe, you've got to be really careful about placing a higher value on it. And, ra and rather than just going, you know, it was a mistake, let it go. Also too is we want to be right, not wrong. We don't want to make mistakes. It's human nature not, you know, to not want to admit we've made a mistake we want to be right and so therefore letting it go and saying it was a mistake is you know it's a proof of our humanness it's a proof of our fallibility and we often don't want to admit that to ourselves let alone anybody else and it can feel like such a waste so this is where Honestly, the more you can be careful and conscious when you're shopping, and I've got some blog posts about this, um, you know, the better then your choices will be when they hit your wardrobe. Also, the style education makes a huge difference. The more you know about yourself, your style, your preferences, what works for you, then you are less likely to make mistakes because you understand much more about what actually works for you and what you'll wear and what you'll you know enjoy wearing and all those and what works for you and makes you look amazing uh so style education really important you know rating it at eight nine or ten out of ten before you buy it so conscious shopping but what about all those things you've already got in your wardrobe so part of what i want you to do is to figure out where you've gone wrong so let's use this as a learning experience let's use these things you don't wear as part of your style education. Let's figure out why you're not wearing them. What is wrong with them? Um, is it just maybe that you're not styling the right or are they just completely wrong for you? Are they not your personality? So if you put it on, you think this is not me, that's a personality thing. If you put it on and think, you know, it's unflattering, it doesn't, like I don't feel good physically, I don't, you know, feel that it flatters me, well, there's something else you've learned. If you put it on and it just feels uncomfortable, we need to know what is comfortable for ourselves. And there's mental com comfort, emotional comfort, and physical comfort we have to consider. We need to think about all these three different sorts of comfort. Um, so working out what is comfortable to you. So why is this thing not comfortable? Because we generally don't wear what is not comfortable. Uh, there's only so much kind of irritation from our clothes we can handle and so therefore thinking about like, what is it about this that means I'm not putting it on, I'm not wearing it. And sometimes it could just be because we don't know how to style it. And that's absolutely the easiest thing to fix because there's so many ideas out there. You can go on Instagram, just do a, a you know, go onto Pinterest, do a search of how to style a whatever it is garment that you're thinking about. Um, and, and see if you can find some ideas and try them out. But if you've tried them out and you, you're not comfortable, let it go. There's something wrong with it. But if you can learn what doesn't work before you let it go, this is really going to inform 
your future purchasing decisions, um, about why you went wrong. And it can sometimes be that we go shopping with the wrong people who talk us into buying things that are not great for us. Uh, we can go shopping, we, you know, we can feel that we need to defer to the expertise of the sales assistant or we want to make them happy because they've been helpful and it's our nature to want to please people. So there's all sorts of reasons we end up with this wardrobe full of clothes um, that we're really not wearing. But you, I also want you to think about this. How expensive is space in your wardrobe? So you think about it, you know, if you had to build another room onto your house, to kind of for your ever expanding wardrobe, how expensive is that? Because often we think that the cost, that value is so great, but it is greater than I have to build a whole nother room onto my house to be able to store the stuff. So what is the value of that space? So if you think about it, your wardrobe is a container. There's only so much you can put into that container. And one of the things I recommend you do is pull everything out, find your favorite things, put them back into the wardrobe, and then you can put a few other things back in. It's like, you know, sometimes we need some things and we don't love them, but we do wear them. Um, but then like the container is only can only be so full and then it becomes bursting and overflowing. So only put back what you love and let the other stuff go. If you're really not sure, you know, put it in a box or put it in a bag and put it out of your wardrobe. And if you haven't looked for it, if you haven't missed it in six months time, just donate the whole lot. Let them go. Or... If they're great quality and more expensive labels, sell them, um, particularly if they're fairly much unworn. The thing is, people want to buy stuff that's in fashion now. They don't want it five years after. So if you've realized you've made a mistake and for some reason or other you can't take it back, sell it fast. So you'll get a higher return on what you invested in it if you sell it faster rather than holding on to it until it's out of date. It's, you know, it's no longer working. And do treat your wardrobe like a kitchen. Uh, where we don't keep the out-of-date milk, we don't keep the out-of-date, you know, the old flour that's got weevils in it. We don't want to keep that stuff. So don't keep the old out-of-date clothes just because they might have good wear left in them. Like, donate them all, let them go, free up that space. And then as far as going, I have this imaginary kind of fantastic capsule wardrobe, that is great. But the first thing you want to consider is, is a capture wardrobe right for you? Are you someone who likes to wear a more limited range of things? Or do you like to have lots of options and for different moods? Because if you're more of an options person who likes to dress more differently and have different moods and kind of gets a bit more bored with their clothes, then you'll need to have a larger wardrobe. So a capsule wardrobe won't work. But if you're someone who really enjoys just kind of limiting your choices and just not having to think about it day to day and that you don't get bored because your creativity and, and mind is on other things, then a capsule is fantastic. But a capsule needs to be built in a very thoughtful, considered way. And so this is, and I've got my capsule wardrobe download that you can go and grab for free about how to build a capsule wardrobe. But you do have to go about building it in a very considered way. So you only bring things in that work as part of that capsule. Just don't buy random things that don't work. So there are just a few things to think about there for you, Jennifer. Um, so, you know, it is something to absolutely consider Part of this is I'm thinking lack of style education. Part of this is, um, you know, we have bought things for the wrong reason. So understanding what those pitfalls are when you buy well versus when you've had bad shopping experiences, when you've brought home things. Remember, we do have this hunter gatherer in us too, where when we go out shopping, it's time and effort and energy. We want to bring something home um, to prove that our time was well spent. Uh, and, and one of the things I always love to hear is when my clients tell me, that they're so empowered now, they come home with nothing. And they often feel a little bit disappointed, but I'm going, that's great, because that means you didn't buy something that was wrong that's going to clutter up your wardrobe that's going to be not worn. You saved your money. Yep, you used some time and energy, but you discovered there was nothing out there for you today. And that is fantastic because it means that you are learning and you are empowered. Uh, so that is actually a great experience to have. Don't see it as a negative. See it as a positive. See it that you are now more discerning, that you understand what works for you. And if it doesn't currently exist in the market, there's no point in buying something just to kind of like make you feel like your time and energy has been well spent. 
Um, use that as, I always think, use those shopping trips where you buy nothing as a learning experience. Think about this as education. You are educating yourself um, and that is always, that has a value for the rest of your life. So of course, if you do want to get your style education, that's what my seven steps of style program is all about getting you that style education so that you can make those much better choices and be empowered when you're actually out shopping to buy the right things, not the wrong things.